next up we got the man the myth the legend hockey psychology when a game sparked a riot now a lot of y'all been asking me I actually had a person in my comments saying every day they've been requesting me to react to this video. It's like day one of C asking CT to react to this video. Day two. You know what I'm saying? So here we are, bro. Here we are. All right, now, y'all been loving the Hockey Psychology videos. If you want more NHL videos, hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Legends have it. Who? I turned into a very dangerous situation in that city in our I Josh Elliott. Hey, look, Elliot. I don't know. I don't know Okay, this is already getting crazy. I don't know what no con American noob. Why are they staying behind each other like this? No Diddy, bro. But yeah, it's not has been tracking all of this overnight nasty. Yeah, as we can see, I mean, it was a terrifying scene there in Vancouver. Angry fans oh. obviously pouring out into the streets. Emotion. They got, a, what? they got a SWAT team? All of this should have never have happened. But when you get two franchises starving for a championship, and a whole lot of bad blood and wait, wait, wait. games. Wait, this is last year? Five months ago. The emotions reach a new level that we see very rarely in sports. And when two teams hate each other as much as these guys do, and emotions get out of hand on the ice, sometimes it becomes a lot bigger game than just was a game. Last year. All right, here we go. In 2011, there was one team who utterly dominated the NHL. That team was the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks finished with the best regular season record and the President's Trophy. Their skillful play led by Daniel and Henrik Sedin allowed them to become the top dog oh, in the league. Oh, this is the Siamese the other Twins. This is what I was talking about. I think I did play for the, uh, they sure did play for the, the Vancouver. Cause I did, I looked the video up. Okay. And Henrik Sedin We, we gonna have that allowed video too on the way too, by the way. I just had to do this video first. Them to become the top dog in the league. On the other side of the league, and Sedin record and the President's Trophy. Their skillful play led by Daniel and Henrik Sedin allowed them to become the top dog in the league. On the other side of the league in the Eastern Conference is the Boston Bruins. The Bruins were a solid physical team who got in your face to have success. Now to get to this moment in a do or die game seven, these two teams had to deal with an overwhelming amount of adversity. The Canucks faced the ultimate mental hurdle in the first round against the defending cup champs who were the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks knocked out the Canucks the previous season, so there was already a lot of bad blood between these two Dang, teams. Who the the Canucks took the first three games and then proceeded to lose the next three, so the series went seven. With all the pressure in the world on the President Trophy Canucks, an epic collapse like this in the first round would likely be catastrophic for the organization and ultimately would lead to a complete overhaul. It would come all the way down to a game seven overtime to push this Canucks team over the hurdle. After that, Ooh, that they nice. got by Nashville in six and San Jose in five to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now what's important to note is that in that San Jose series, Vancouver's main advantage went nine for 24 in the entire series. That's a sizzling 37.5%. San Jose wanted to get physical with the Canucks, but their mentality, according to defenseman Kevin Bieksa, which was basically let the Sharks push them around if they wanted to. The Canucks were confident that they had one of the best power plays in the world that year, and if you wanted to take stupid penalties, they okay. were going to bury you. Okay, and that was exactly what they did in that series. Okay. On the other side is the Boston Bruins, who went seven games with the Canadians, swept the Flyers, and then won again in seven games against Tampa. The hero in both rounds one and three for Boston was none other than winger Nathan Horton, a hulking power forward who had a knack for the big moments in this playoff run by scoring the game seven OT winner in round one and the series clincher in another game seven of round three. That leads us to this series here. The Stanley Cup Finals between the Vancouver Canucks and the Boston Those Bruins. The game one, Rogers Arena is in Vancouver, Ooh. and this game couldn't get any closer. Big saves on both ends, tons of physicality with ah! both teams trying to set the tone, and in doing so, key defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks and Dan Hamuse tries to throw okay. a huge- Oh my god, oh my god, yo, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Now, okay, that was one thing I did say in the last video. I was asking y'all, what is y'all favorite thing about hockey, um, either watching it or playing it? You know what I mean? And I, that's just something I missed out was the hip checks. Hip checks, they're damn near equivalent to big hits. You know what I mean? Like, bro, you literally, look how, look at this. Perfect screenshot. Bro, it's literally flipped up. It's no way in a hockey game 
you could go from uh, planted on your heels or on your feet to then two seconds later, you're flipped the whole other way. <laughs> like, bro, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? That is, hey, bro, as long as nobody get hurt, that's the only thing I care about. As long as nobody get hurt. You know what I mean? I love the big hits, but as long as I'm like, because right now, like, he about to break his neck. So, hopefully so, he get hurt. So, key defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks and Dan Hamus tries to throw a huge ah. hip check on Milan Lucic. And as a result, he just ends up crumpling. When Hamus laid that hit, he would tear his groin right off the bone. And that means he was completely done for the series. Ooh. A huge blow to the blue line for the Canucks, but the bigger storyline was Alex Burrows apparently biting the finger of Patrice Bergeron in a scrum. The cameras caught the interaction between the Yo. two, but it was unclear to the NHL whether or not Burrows actually did bite his finger. However, oh, bro, he bit his finger, bro. Don't, hey, bro, hey, hey look, look, look. Bro might be the next Mike Tyson, bro. Hey. Finger of Patrice Bergeron. You literally. <laughs> The cameras caught the interaction. Bro, a little hungry out there. Hold on, now nah, calm down. <laughs> Hold on. Action between the two, but <laughs> it was unclear to the NHL whether or not Burroughs actually did bite his finger. However, many fans found it hard to believe that a player like Patrice Bergeron would have lied about something like that. Either way, Burroughs didn't receive any discipline, and he was cleared to play in Game Two. Wow. Rafi Torres of the Canucks would be the only guy to find the back of the net in this game, and the Canucks took a tight game one on home ice. The mind games and hate had officially been ignited. Then the presence of Alex Burrows was felt big time in game two, as this one included more scoring, but was once again another tightly contested bout. Burrows would like score this. the first goal of the game, and after both teams went back and forth to get all squared up at two, this game would require OT. As soon as the puck drops, Daniel Sedin makes a hit. No, this is hilarious. No, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. This game would require OT. No, that's funny. No, no, stop, 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 stop. That got to be one of the best taunts I've seen. As soon as the puck drops, Daniel Sedin makes a heads up play to Burroughs to spring him on a quick rush. Burroughs fakes the slap shot, gets Thomas out of the blue paint, and then tucks a wrap around to end the game. Oh, okay. Okay. A player who is arguably not even supposed to be in this game, too ends up being an integral part to the result. The Canucks were now up 2-0, but both games were extremely tight and honestly could have went either way. This set up a crucial game three. If the Canucks went up 3-0, this series was likely to be curtains. But if the Bruins found a way to win, it changes everything. Early on, the Bruins looked to target Burroughs, especially for his antics against oh, Bergeron. Okay. A couple of solid hits and some trash talking raised the intensity of this game, but with only just a few minutes being burned in the first period, an innocent looking rush would change the entire series. Ooh, I didn't even see it. Ooh. Okay, that was all show. Oh my God, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. Is he okay? Is he okay? Yo. And it was like a blind side. Ah, this, this is legal though, right? This should be legal. You don't I don't I don't know how because I told you I'm a new NHL fan. So I don't know what's technically like how you have to hit somebody. I don't know how you have to do it. But this don't if I'm just going off American football, you lean with your shoulder, that's you know what I'm saying? That's legal, bro. That's a, you you're not like you're trying to leave with your head. You're trying to spear him. So, I would think this is legal. Now, I don't know if, you know what I'm saying, people got mad because he got knocked out. Which, that really ain't his fault if he got knocked out. I mean, shit, that was a good hit. Or maybe you can't blindside. Is that what you can't do? Maybe you can't blindside? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Mm. Oh, and I think he landed on his head. Oof, oof. Chill, chill. After being a critical part of their run to get to this point, Nathan Horton would dish the puck to the wing and watch his pass as he enters the zone. Almost a full second after the puck is gone, <sighs> defender Aaron Rome on the Canucks steps up and levels Horton with a high and late hit. The aftermath was hard to watch. Conscious, but no one was home. Horton had to be stretched off the ice, and this hit completely changed the dynamic of the series. The Bruins rallied to score eight goals all against Vancouver's star goalie in Roberto Luongo. The Canucks poked the bear and the bear woke up pissed off. Even winger Jeff Tambellini of the Vancouver Canucks 
felt that he'd never seen anything change so drastically in a series after that hit. Aaron Rome was suspended for the remainder of the series and the Canucks were starting to do too much to try and make up for missing players. The Bruins steamrolled the Canucks 4-0 in Game 4 and the series shifted back to Vancouver, where once again, it was another extremely tight contest. Ooh, Maxime ooh. Lapierre scored the only goal at 4.35 of the third when the puck bounced off the wall and caught Tim Thomas by surprise. After the Canucks won 1-0 and Luongo was Why named nothing? the first star of the game, he said this about Tim Thomas when asked about the lone goal in the game. Comes from a weird angle, goes off Tim's body, just how hard that is for uh, It's not hard if you're playing in the paint, so it's an easy save for me, but if you're wandering out and aggressive like he does, I mean, that's going to happen. So uh, he might make some saves that I won't, but uh, in cases like that, I mean, uh, uh, we want to take advantage of bounces like that and make sure that we're in good position to bury those just pouring more gasoline onto the fire between these two teams, but it seemed like the Canucks were getting sucked into the noise. As Luongo admitted afterwards, he wished that he wasn't as worried about what was going on on the outside. With the Canucks now just being one win away from the Stanley Cup, everything started to fall apart. Players and members of the organization were starting to get ahead of themselves and proceeded to lose focus. But more importantly than that, Yo. the Bruins started to physically... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This is like one of the best beef, get, beef series I've ever seen. Let me know some more beef series like this. I want to see more of this. I want to see more of this. ...to lose focus. But more importantly Yo. than that, the Bruins <laughs> started... to look away. <laughs> ...and proceeded to lose focus. Try to look away but like more that. importantly than that, the Bruins started to physically overwhelm the Canucks. Defenseman Kevin Bieksa said that it seemed like the Bruins defenseman had a mandate to make life hell on Vancouver's forwards. Whether it was a slash, cross check, constant scrums, Bieksa admitted that they just didn't have the team to match up with that kind of physicality. The Bruins won game six easily 5-2, and in the final minute of the game, Marshawn proceeded to punch Sedin in the face multiple times with no retaliation. Up. That was a bad look for a team that was already called soft and whose toughness was in question in this series. Yeah, bro, Even though the Canucks said they wanted to take punches to draw power plays, the power plays just didn't come, and the result was almost symbolic. So is this why everybody was telling me? Because I remember I had the Bruins shirt, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people were telling me, like, don't root for the Bruins because the Bruins is like a hard-nosed team where they, like, just love, you know what I'm saying, fighting and hitting and stuff like that. Is this why? This must have came from this. Yeah. Cause I think around they already say around this time they was already like like hitting a lot and stuff like that. So okay, it makes sense. I don't know about the Bruins nowadays, you know what I'm saying? But this 2011, so like back then, I would think back then it was a little bit you got away with it a little bit more. You know what I mean? I don't know of what was happening. I mean, just look at this. Marshawn and the Bruins are just sending a message yeah, for Game Seven, Come on, and bro. no one is nah, fighting. Bro, that's, nah, I don't care what happens, bro. You never let a man. Literally, and this is making it even worse. He don't, not only like he just doing this. Bro has his hand on his collar and he doing this. And you just let, just letting him do it. Like you're literally getting bullied, bro. This is, you're getting bullied. I don't care what happens, bro. I don't care what happens. You never let a man just test your gangster and you don't, I don't care if you know you're going to lose the fight. Still stand up for yourself. Who cares if you lost, bro? Who cares? You know what I'm saying? It happens to the best of us. But you sit there and let him hit you and let him just bully you and bitch you around? The fuck? No. 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 Um, and the result pitiful, was bro. almost symbolic of what was happening. I mean, just look at this. Marshawn and the Bruins are sending he, a message. Look, he, for he, he, he anticipating the, the punt. Do it again. I like that shit. Do it again. Yeah, yeah, it turned me on. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yes. Like, bro. For game seven, and no shit, one is bro. fighting back on the Canucks. That's crazy, bro. That brings us to this moment here. The do or die game, game seven? seven in Vancouver. Okay. With all the pressure in the world on the Canucks to close out this magical season on home ice, the first goal of this game means everything to both teams. The Canucks came out with energy and had multiple grade A chances, Ooh. including this one by Daniel Sedin, Ooh but Tim Ooh. Thomas remained the difference in this series. Multiple big time saves early on gave the Bruins a chance to strike. A young Brad Marchand would throw you a backhander. See, you see the extra pushes and shoves too, look at it right here. Gave the you Bruins a chance oh. to 
strike. Which man, he he know. Oh, this the char. That's the literally the shirt I got. This Chara. This is who this is. Chara. Okay. <laughs> so he literally see it right now. Chara literally looking at him like, okay, I just pushed him off of me. Then he gonna continue to like, hit him. A young Brad Marchand with yep. the. He's, yo, they just bullies out there, bro. Days early on, oh my God. gave the Bruins a chance to strike. A young Brad Marchand would throw a backhander into the slot, and Bergeron would bang at it through some legs to catch Luongo off guard and make it a 1-0 game. With every second that Vancouver spent chasing the game, the pressure only got more intense. It seemed like every time the Canucks came close to breaking through, Tim Thomas and the Bruins like would find a way to come out unharmed. Oh, I love the patience. No, 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 I love the patience. I think this is another thing I like about hockey a lot. I like when this exact play, when you just wait, the patience... You know what I mean? Now he, the third person was there to help him out. But if he wasn't there, that would have been a great goal, bro. You see this dude literally, Bruce Lee, trying to kick him. What is this dude doing, bro? What you got going on? Freaky. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo. True. I've Tim never seen that before in my life. No, 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 Only no, no, got no, no. more Stop playing, stop playing. It seemed like every time the Canucks <laughs> came close to breaking through, Tim Thomas. Well, I love the patience, though. I love the patience. Wait, wait, let him do that little freaky ass shit. Chill, relax. And then, but, uh, shoot. He could have scored, but whatever. And the Bruins <clears throat> would find a way to come out unharmed. A Marshawn wraparound goal, followed by a Bergeron shorthanded tally in the second, meant that the Canucks were slowly watching their dream slip from their hands. As the seconds ticked down, the Canucks and their fans would experience heartbreak while the Bruins celebrated in total elation. This series here would go down in history as one of the greatest battles the NHL has ever seen. Wow. With all the hate, drama, and intensity this series was filled with, it would be one that fans would remember for a long time. Unfortunately, the most memorable part didn't even happen on the ice. Wow. After Game 7 ended, the city of Vancouver went berserk. It wasn't reflective of the Canuck fan base, but rather what can happen when a mob mentality reaches to a whole fuck? other level. A magical season for the Canucks ended in the most bitter way possible. This series showed just how much every inch matters in this sport, both physically and mentally. At any given moment, something can happen and it can alter the entire psyche of your team. Give a guy one inch and they will take a mile. The Canucks were the more talented team, but the Bruins and their physicality grinded them down until they had nothing left. Come on, one bounce me. here, one different choice there, and the outcome of this series could have been entirely different. To this day, the bad blood and mind Charlie games between the players involved in this series still live on. And although this hockey game would result into something everyone would like to forget, it was really symbolic of the series. For a series that had every element of the game that you both love and hate to see, how it ended is reflective of how the series went as a whole. And that was pure chaos. Damn, bro. That is crazy, bro. That is crazy. I wish I can... Let me see if I can um, see um, more footage on this riot. Hockey riot. Let me look it up. Oh, look. I look up hockey riot. It's literally the first thing I pop up. 2011 Vancouver Cup riot. That's insane. Let's see. Let's see. Are they talking about 10 years? What is that mean? Oh my god, what the fuck? The scene just outside our CBC Vancouver. What in the bro? What is going on? Knocks lost in game seven Yo! of the Stanley Cup final. And for the second time. Bro, what is going on? Oh my god. Island crowds this time. <laughs> while police were once. Yo, okay, okay. Again, oh, okay, okay, okay. Four blocks up the street at the edge of the crowd. <laughs> but while police were once again overwhelmed yo, yo, by I'm drunk, funny. violent crowd. Bro, he wanted to kiss him so bad. He, he thought about it. He thought about it. This time, there was a big difference in bringing rioters to justice. So my question is, are y'all smashing y'all own, y'all each other's vehicles? Or is this, in Bro is this in Boston? It's not even in Boston, bro. Think about it. This is not even in Boston. If y'all doing this shit in Boston, okay. But this y'all just who y'all fucking up y'all own each other shit. And that's y'all. That's supposed to be your your uh blood cousin. Riders told us uh, I got caught up in the moment. One of the reasons I want to talk about this still is uh, this whole a whole. Half of you didn't want to do this shit anyways. They ain't even cared. Probably half of them didn't even know what was going on. They just wanted to some fuck some shit up.
Featured an anonymous couple falling to the pavement and oh. police aggressively trying to get them off the yeah, road. The but shield, from a real riot shield in real life, though, no, crazy. What the? Okay, these niggas, it ain't in the movie. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Oh my God, I cannot be saying this right. It's got to be a joke, bro. It's no way these niggas kissing like this. I ain't going to lie, though. I'm not even going to lie. This low-key hard. I can't even hate. I can't hate. This is a picture you dare to put on your wall like, Bonnie and Clyde, through thick and thin, we still stay together. Oh my God. <laughs> Romantic. And it's a ro What the fuck? No, no, no. photographer Richard Lamb a single frame made the moment seem romantic. Yo, it ain't no way, bro. That gotta be the funniest. Shit. They got, of course, I called it. Of course, <laughs> of course, bro. Of course, bro. Let's see what they gotta say. Yeah, I guess we didn't really know much about going viral. It's not something that had ever crossed our minds, or even a phrase that you know now it's so commonplace. But I don't think. Either of us really had even heard that phrase at that point. <laughs> or the ugly side of going viral. Fall wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, shit, if I was going to have a picture like that, bro, I would want it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I would want it. The low key is a hard picture, though. But the only thing about it, though, is like you can't, you really can't even tell that's them. That's low key the downside of it. Because it's like, bro, if it's like, say you have it in your house, somebody asks you, like, why do you have this picture right here? Oh, it's me and my girlfriend. Bro, stop lying, bro. Bro, no, for real, that's me and my girlfriend. You mean to tell me it's police outside. It look like it's fire, whole other shit. And y'all in the middle of the street kissing. Yes, bro. I, for real, bro. Why you got a lot of me like this? I thought we was friends. Bro, for real. Like, we was. The... Just save it, bro. Just save it. You don't, like, why you got a lot? What are you lying about? <laughs> Cause you really can't even look at their face, bro. Look at you can't even see their face. Wait, is this them too? Oh, is this after it happened? Oh. Okay. Okay. No, I, um, I'm not. A, I'm not a comedian. <laughs> to try to set the record straight, they chose to do one Canadian interview ten years ago with us on the National. I was upset and I fell down. Why he let her talk? Didn't really know, you know, exactly what was happening. I was upset. She was a bit hysterical afterwards, obviously. Uh, well, he, you, could, you could tell she she ruined a relationship, bro. You could tell, bro. You could tell, bro. You could tell. Come on, bro. You gotta be a man, bro. You know what I'm saying? Be a man. You don't want you you don't want leading, bro. You don't want lead. Don't be. You can already tell. I can see. It's just too deep for this, though. This this we, this hockey. This is hockey. She was a bit hysterical afterwards, obviously, um, and I was just trying to calm her down. These days, Scott is. <laughs> hey, 